Hi, welcome. Uh, in this video, I'm going to go through problem 9. In problem 9, it says, which of the following series converge? Um, part 1 gives us this series, and it looks like we can uh, check it using the ratio test. Remember, the ratio test said this, which is, if the limit is n goes to infinity of the absolute value of the n plus first term divided by the um, nth term is less than, if that limit of that ratio is less than 1, then the sum here converges, the series converges. If it's greater than 1, the series diverges, and if it's equal to 1, the test is inconclusive, so you'd have to do another test. Okay, so why don't we apply the ratio test here and find out. So we'd have to write limit as n goes to infinity and this would say 8 to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 factorial times n factorial over 8 to the n. Okay, now this limit as n goes to infinity, notice by exponent rules we could find out that those two are going to cancel to n 8 in the numerator. And because we know n factorial divided by n plus 1 factorial equals n factorial over n plus 1 times n factorial. We note that we can simplify that part into just 1 over n plus 1. Okay, good to know. So let's get rid of this. And so what we're saying is that now we just have the limit as n goes to infinity of 8 over n plus 1, and that clearly goes to 0. So since this goes to 0, and that is less than 1, we know that this converges. Great. So, uh, because this too lends itself to be checked um, easily by the ratio test, we're going to use the ratio test there in part 2 to check. Um, and the ratio test applied there would say limit as n goes to infinity. right, over n plus 1 to the 100, and then times the reciprocal of the nth term, right, so n factorial, got it. Now, oop, it's the other side of my absolute value, right? Okay, got it. Now, <clears throat> as before, we're going to cancel these two into an n plus 1 in the numerator. Now, n to the 100, if I were able to put n plus 1 to the 100 underneath it, which I should be able to, right, that's multiplication right there, then I could write n over n plus 1 all to the 100 power, and that's just ex applying exponent rules. So then we gather that um, this is going to say limit as n goes to infinity of absolute value n plus 1 is in the numerator and then the rest of it is n over n plus 1 all to the 100 and I might as well write a denominator of 1 there now the limit as n goes to infinity of this because this part goes to 1 is going to be 1 to the 100 therefore just 1 so I could once I apply the limit pretend like that's not even there so really I'm just worried about the limit as n goes to infinity of the absolute value of n plus 1. And this clearly goes to infinity, right? So um, here I'm assuming that I wrote this is a product of two limits, this guy and then this guy, where we concluded that the latter goes to 1. Therefore, we're just concerned about the former, which is that, and that clearly goes to infinity, which is greater than 1. Therefore, this diverges, so that does not converge. Great, so we just have one more left to check. So, and the third part. And the third part, um, if you remember what you did when you did direct comparison or limit comparison, it's clear that this, uh, uh, this is a series that we can find a direct comparison for. Um, and I'm going to say that I'm going to compare it to this here, uh, the sequence of numbers that's determined by this and therefore the series that results from such a sequence. 
Okay, so how does this compare to this guy? Well, first note that the numerators are the same. I've kept the numerators n plus 1 in both uh, cases, so that's good. But then looking at the denominator, because I have the plus 2 there and the plus 3 there, I know that the denominator over here is bigger than the denominator over here. Therefore, I know that n plus 1 divided by n times n plus 2 times n plus 3, as it has the same numerator but um, bigger denominator, must be less than this guy. This again is because n cubed is smaller than this, and since the numerators are the same, the guy with the bigger denominator as a whole fraction should be smaller, so that fraction is smaller than that. And of course I don't even require strict inequality, I just need um, less than or equal to. And now we can use direct comparison, um, because we know this converges, this must converge. And um, how do I know that this converges? Because, well, or the series resulting from this, how do I know that that converges? Because, first of all, it's fine, we'd have sigmas in front of these, fine. n equals 1 to infinity, or n equals 0 to infinity. In this case, n equals 1 to infinity, fine. Uh, but how do I know that that converges? Because I know I could write that, that, it, that this guy as n over n cubed plus 1 over n cubed, wherein I would realize it's 1 over n squared, it reduces to this, 1 over n cubed. And I know by the p-series that this converges and this converges, that is with sigma in front of them, both of these things converge, and therefore with sigma in front of it, that converges, so this converges, and therefore the guy who is term by term smaller um, should converge. Therefore, uh, 3 also is correct. So both 3 and 1 have convergent series, and therefore the correct answer is D, 1 and 3 only. Alright, uh, take care.